Welcome to another edition of Favorite Flies of the North. Uh, first of all, I just have an announcement. I uh, recently made a Facebook page. Uh, I link it uh, above in this video, also in the description below. Uh, it's called Arctic Riverside Fly Fishing. It's just where I post um, all my videos and, and the other fly tying and fly fishing related stuff. And today I'm going to be tying for you the um, Kling Camera. Maybe this is a little bit of a variation on it, uh, especially in regards of the abdomen. But uh, this way of tying it has, uh, has proven very effective to me. Um, I start off by tying on the thread. So the first thing we're going to tie in is the uh, para post. And this is just regular um, poly yarn. And I take it and fold it over the hook shank, come up from underneath and make sure I have it in the middle where I want it and now I can just make myself a few turns back and forth here like that before I now start to tie myself up to make the post where I'm gonna wrap the hackle um, and on a clean camera, I don't think you need that many turns. So, that should be about it. And again, I'm just going to go and put down a few more wraps. This is a fairly secure way of tying it, but as you can see, it's pretty easy for this one to roll around um, so to prevent that I like to take a little bit of super glue and I'm just gluing this area up just like that now when that dries um, it will hold for a long time alright so next is the ribbing most clean cameras don't have ribbings and but I like to put it in and this is a mahogany brown uh, sewing thread nothing more fancy than that I just think this is um, polyester or something uh, it's very strong but I like to use this because it helps segmenting the body a lot more and I'm not going to go any further than about there. Then I'm going to tie myself back up. Like that. And then I'm going to turn my hook a little bit here. Makes it easier for me to make the underbody. Alright, so the dubbing I'm going to use is this one, uh, which is, is a blend of um, amber and uh, late Cahill super fine dubbing. You can see I'm dubbing quite loose here, um, and I want this body to be fairly thick because this is gonna be imitating a um, a caddis pupa. All 
All right, so there's the abdomen. Now I'm gonna just follow up with the ribbing. This uh, sewing thread. And I want to make nice even turns. So now I'm going to straighten out this one again. Alright, sorry my camera got uh, the battery run out. So, but the next thing to do is to tie in the hackle. I just tie myself up here almost to the top. I don't tie, tie it up all the way up the wing post. Um, what I can even do here is to separate the hackle and the wing and I can place down a turn or two on top. This will help the hackle stay um, much better uh, once we start to wrap it down. So for the thorax area I'm going to be using this and this is mahogany uh, super fine dubbing. I'm not dubbing too thick, but at the same time I'm not too fussy about it. Alright, so now it's time for to wrap our hackle. And Many people are very fussy about these hackles. Um, I don't get why. Um, oops, we have one of these fibers that don't want to. Um, I'm really any fussy about them. I just all I care about is how many turns I have, and this is two turns. Uh, I can try one more. I'm gonna take one turn off. Alright, so this is two turns off hackle. All the fibers that I've wrapped, I take them back and have my hackle point facing forward and then I put down two or three turns and I, I fold everything back here again just like that. Now I can wrap my head. just like that and yeah this fly looks kind of messy at this point but don't worry we can easily fix that again I could have went with a black thread uh, for the head but Instead it's pretty easy, you know, I can go in with a permanent marker and fix that up. When you get varnish over this, it's not gonna matter. Alright, so next is the varnish and I'm not gonna bother trying to get a nice uh, shiny head on this. This is mainly only for... Uh, This is only just to help the durability of the fly. And I'm just going in with a tiny hook here to make sure I get the eye open. Again, I'm sorry if my tying seem a little bit scruffy, but but I do have the camera in between me and and the fly. So All right now I can start finishing this fly up. And the first thing I do is I take off the hackle and again I'm not tying flies that is meant to be necessarily beautiful to look at but I'm tying flies that will fish well 
Still the hackle looks a little bit weird, um, but that you easily just fix just by pulling these fibers down. By the way, the uh, varnish on the head is dried. I didn't film that, but... Um, so now to choose the length. Um, I don't want to have these posts too long, so I'm just going to go there. There you go. That's, in my opinion, a really nice uh, and effective clink hammer. Um, if you look at it from underneath, you can really see the uh, silhouette, and it looks like a, a caddis pupa. You know, really give the clink hammer a try. Um, it's an amazing pattern. Um, it was originally invented by Hans von Klinken. So that's how I like to tie my clink hammers. And uh, yeah, this seems to fish very well. Seems like I lost a, a turn of ribbing in there, but you know, it doesn't matter. Other than that, uh, please remember to uh, go visit my Facebook page, uh, Arctic Riverside Fly Fishing. I will be posting all my videos, and uh, so please follow me there uh, as well. And uh, yeah, of course, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like these videos. Um, Alright, so that's it. Thanks for watching.